Hi, here I am at the Handy Quilter headquarters with my favorite person at Handy Quilter, Brenda Grills, uh, who I've known for a long time. And, been a lot of years, uh, Joe. Been a lot of years, and Brenda made it possible for me to come here and be her artist in residence. Once. You were our very first one, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very first artist in residence. And what I did, thanks to Brenda, was this. Which you have gifted to Handy Quilter. We're really grateful. So Joe had a grand idea for taking his pen and ink drawings and converting them to stitches. And you needed a little help getting started. <laughs> I had contacted everybody that I knew in the business and finally Brenda wrote to me and said, what are you trying to do? And I said, I'm trying to do this. And she said, well, we, we can do this. So this is uh, the quilt we're standing in front of. Come over this way. 1871 quilt. And that's not a year, is it? No, it's not a year, although, uh, you can see the date down here, 1871. I just changed the address on this house, the, the street number, because I didn't think it was cool to put the actual street number of the uh, house. And I just wanted to put a new number on there. And then I was looking up on Wikipedia one time, um, uh, the history of long arm quilting, when the commercial quilting machine was invented. Yeah. 1871. Oh, I kid you not. That's perfect. That's I, awesome. It was. So, so what I love about this quilt, Joe, is that you took your drawing, you scanned it in, you digitized it, but you did it in sections, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you don't notice them so much uh, uh, on the front, and for some reason, you can see it on the back uh, a little more clearly. See these lines that come through? So the lines they don't... were quilted in squares, right? Seven and a half inch squares, that's right. And I love the fact that you, on purpose, did not try to make the lines line up because That's right. we wanted to emphasize the fact that it had been done in sections. That's right. right. I had never seen anybody do this with robotic quilting before you two. Right. Yeah. I, I always give you credit for being the first one to do it. Now, we might hear from your viewers that somebody beat you to it, and That's we'd right. love to hear about it if they did. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Using pro stitcher in a way that uh, is so artistic and... Uh, I had to trick it into doing what I wanted. Yeah. yeah. So there's software for converting it to stitches, and then you put it on a pro stitcher, you pull it down on your handy quilter fusion. Yep, that's, that's right. That's terrific. Well, we love having it here, and Joe, would you like to see some of the other quilts hanging in this building? That's exactly what I'd like to do. Okay, we'll join you in a second. So, Joe, when you come to Handy Quilter, you will, first thing you notice is there are quilts everywhere. There are always over 200 quilts hanging in this building, and they come to us from a variety of sources. Some of them are on loan, and that's the case for the quilts hanging in this hallway. These are all vintage quilt tops that were purchased mostly on eBay, and they were purchased because the designs were largely in the public domain. And there was a reason they weren't ever quilted. And when our handy quilter educators took them home to quilt them finally, they discovered why they hadn't been quilted. <laughs> Some of those borders were waving at you. Yes. But they know how to tame an unruly quilt top. And we challenged the educators to quilt these vintage tops in a way that the original maker never would have dreamed. You might want to do a little close-up because yes. there's some beautiful quilting happening in this hallway. Here's one, Barbarella by Marie Eldridge. And she discovered that four block quilt, there was nothing symmetrical or identical about it. And so she made her quilting reflect that and the, the quilting is also asymmetrical. Yeah. Some of these quilts your viewers might recognize, they were featured in a McCall's quilting special edition called Vintage Made Modern. A number of years ago now. I remember that. This one was done by Debbie Brown. The famous Debbie Brown. The famous Debbie Brown. She does uh, articles on machine quilting for lots of the magazines. And you can see these uh, fabrics from the 1930s and 40s, I would say. I think they're a little later than that. I would put this, yeah, well, like this 40s way. probably. 40s, 40s maybe. 50s, this could be 50s, yeah. Uh -huh. You and I remember the 50s, don't we? <laughs> yes, we do. Very. Oh, what, very well. So here's another one that's definitely got 30s fabrics in it. Yes. The best is the quilter. Well, such beautiful Dresden plates, and it's a shame it was never finished, but now it is. And don't you think that original quilt top maker would be proud? I think. And uh, I love this uh, uh, treatment of the Dresden plate. It's not one that I've seen before. I think it's a Megan original. Yeah. 
Yeah. I believe Megan used pro stitcher in this quilt though. Yeah. Because you can tell these right. motifs are exactly the same. That wouldn't be true of hand guided. Right. So she designed this and then yeah. said put it here, put it there, and so on. And you know, the people who are a little concerned about computerized quilting, they'll often say that it's cheating to yeah, quilt yeah, with yeah, a yeah. computer. And I'm here to tell you that you can screw up a quilt with a computer <laughs> just as fast as you can by hand. So it takes skill and you have to learn how to use your tools. That's right. I just spent two days picking out the, my latest mistake. It always takes longer to pick out than it, it does. To pick those in. This is another Debbie Brown one. She calls it Penny Candy. <laughs> And I would say these little pebbles are hand done. This is not pro stitcher. And yeah. Debbie loves her ribbon candy. And yeah. Here we are. Look at that. Isn't that great? Oh, man. This is one of those quilt designs that has secondary designs when you put the blocks directly together. Right. In fact, you might think that this is the block. Right. And you would be wrong. Right. This is the block. See? I love a good trick and a puzzle in a quilt. Yes. Harriet so Carmenini cool. did this old glory quilt, and she really did bring it to life. Yeah. That beautiful double pink that is so hard to uh, date, even these indigos. It was printed by hard. the Ely and Walker Company, and it was in print for 130 years, so it doesn't help you at all to try to figure out when this was made. Yeah, is it 1880 or 1980? Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't think it's 1980. Right. This is uh, quilted by Mary Beth Crapel, and it's called Vintage Circle in a Star. And I have to tell you, I, I've been hanging around quilts and quilters and antique quilts for many, many decades now. I've never seen this pattern anywhere else. Have you? No. So no. Nope. It's an easy one, and it's kind of surprising. Why didn't somebody else think of this? Yeah. But I've never seen it published. And I think it was the original top maker's own idea. To me, that's the glory of, uh, of our quilt world, is this idea that you can do anything you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This one was just featured in uh, Fonts and Porter Love of Quilting, and it was quilted by Jane Hopridge. Look at that. She calls it orange slice. <laughs> <laughs> and it certainly is. Well, I guess we're right here. Well, just a minute. 